pretty much everyone loves old Volkswagens. V-dubs are cool, right? Tons of personality, super fun. What not everyone loves is the archaic mechanical reality of V-dubs. Now, sure, for some it's cool. They're happy to putt along, deal with the leaks and the stench and all that, and it's kind of part of the charm. But for others, not gonna fly, right? So I am pleased to share with you today the first Icon electric vehicle. It is a 73 Volkswagen thing. We like to refer to as the wild thing. Now, why do we call it the wild thing? You may ask yourself. Well, it's pretty straightforward because it can do things like this. Bet you never seen a thing scoot like that before, huh? Yeah, this thing is just too much fun. So we upgraded the brakes with Willwood disc brakes. Obviously, we got rid of the old motor. We'll get into the EV stuff in a minute. But before we do that, talk about other basic modifications. The cool thing is, by the way, this thing is 100% original paint, which we got really lucky finding such a nice example. As you can imagine, it's pretty hard to find good examples of these cars. They pretty much saw harsh lives. You know, another thing is like, it's one of those cars that like, it makes people smile, right? Like, if you have ever been in one, you finally remember that experience. And in my case, I remember that experience. And even though it was a complete crap experience, I still have a certain fondness for the things. So my personal experience was in the Yucatan in uh, Eastern Mexico. We rented one from the hotel and we went to go to some lovely remote beach, which is all good and fun until coming back at dusk. The rotted out rear floor was in a condition as such to when we hit a big rut, it tossed the battery, which hit the dirt road and exploded into a billion little pieces and we were stuck there for about eight hours, but whatever. The funny thing is though, I'm still fond of things. So here we are. So we upgraded the suspension with coilovers that are adjustable all the way around, which also helped us compensate for our new weight layout. We added sway bars to control that weight and keep the weight balance good and super fun to drive. And then mechanically, we worked with our friends at Z Electric and at Stealth EV to engineer the electronics. So we've been watching what our buddies at Z Electric have been doing for a while, and it's killer. Pretty conservative EV conversion, everyone's happy, really cool aggressive price point. But in our case, our client said, yeah, but what if it had a little more power? What if it had a little bit more range? So we were happy to make that happen. So in the end, we decided to run an AM racing, AMR motor, which uh, we're actually using in our other EV projects. Really well made right here in the US. They have a really nice range of motors on their menu, which take you up into pretty stupendous power, which you will see on the next Icon derelict EV project. Pretty excited to get that one done. This one can be charged by either 110 or 220. Charge time's roughly about eight hours, and it works with municipal, home, or even the Tesla chargers, which is kind of cool. So it's you got a lot of freedom there. We're running a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. We have a really cool dash designed by our buddies at Andromeda. So it's actually a digital screen and it gets its miles per hour via a speed sensor. And we took the extra time to design the look so that it reminded you of the old analog displays that would have been found in this original car, but obviously to reflect all the things you really need to know in regards to the electric powertrain. So you have remaining charge, you have an efficiency meter. The meter also shows you when you're regenning power. And you also have tachometer and of course speed. 
but it's got a really cool look to it. This powertrain puts out 180 pounds of torque. That's why it can do copious donuts, and it's really fun to, uh, to drive. There's a lot of safety concerns that are addressed in this, again, above and beyond what you normally see in the EV conversion world. We're running two Orion battery management systems, and we're running multiple safety stop gaps to prohibit overcharge and temperature control and all that good stuff. Gosh, what else can I tell you? We did a cool sound system. So you have a little dock for your phone. Other than that, the audio system is running nice focal audio speakers that are run dedicated to uh, Bluetooth signal. And then there's simply one hidden little rotary knob under the dash for circuit volume. The speakers are built into enclosures up in the front kick vents and also into the rear in the enclosure that houses many of the batteries. The rest of the batteries are housed in the front trunk. So would that be a boot, a frunk, whatever, in the front. And we tried to hide the charger inside of the factory gas cap, but unfortunately it wouldn't fit. So we fit it into the rear bumper. As far as the engine bay packaging is done, we took a couple liberties there and did a little more than was needed just to make the design flow work out nice. So uh, our buddies at Z Electric help us think through some cool ideas there. So the enclosures where the cooling vans breathe on the left and right of the motor, we painted in the body color. And then you'll notice the cutouts for the fans. Those are the same that you would find on the rear quarter panels for the cooling intakes for the original gas motor. And then there's a couple anodized details and surface finishes that are just a wee bit sexier. For pedestrian safety, we applied the latest advanced Tesla pedestrian warning system, which we have right here on the outside. <laughs> Can't beat that, right? A little high tech, but I think it'll be okay. We also fit this with uh, the new door uppers from the Thing Shop. They make really nice quality ones and they're glass, which is nice and they're tempered and they rattle a hell of a lot less than the originals. And we did all new weather stripping. We spent about 3,000 hours chasing rattles because it is a thing. And now that the gas motor is gone, you hear everything. So rattles and noises you never even knew to be concerned about before were suddenly rearing their ugly heads. So we spent a lot of time fine tuning that. Something else I've always loved about early things are the super cool marine inspired floorboards. So I think they're just right at home here. And they're cool because debris gets out of the way. And then uh, they just have kind of a cool aesthetic to them. You really can't beat them. We Linex coated the floor, although we added probably about 20 pounds in polyurea. We also created a little bit of sound and vibration insulation, and we protected that floor from corrosion because oddly enough, this thing is 100% rust-free, so super cool. We put the video clock in the dash and the hole left over by the original, I think it was an oil temperature gauge. And then you have the traditional headlight switch, heater switch knob, although we fit it with the modern electric heater. And then the knob looks stock, but it's not. We actually CNC that bugger. And then we took advantage of our new laser in-house and laser etched the graphic for heat. It's all in the details, right? But that kept it so all the dash knobs were stock. You got the stock hazard knob. You got the stock 12 volt power port. Yeah, and I think that's it. Everything else on it's pretty stock. We found a hard top on Craigslist and restoed that and painted it semi-gloss black at the client's request and put it on here. Truck still has the original soft top, not in great shape, but we gave it to the client so he has it if he wants it. You'll notice on this particular derelict, the best place for the Icon Lizard seemed to be 
up on the hood. He's sunning himself. He's enjoying himself. Plus, he hit a couple bolt holes. Whoever owned this truck before was a little happy with the drill gun, so there's a lot of holes here and there, but we just couldn't bring ourselves to monkey with the original paint, you know? The wheels are super cool, kind of retro Porsche V-Dub wheels. We actually imported those from Japan. They originally were a gloss billet, but we decided to kind of tone them down, make it look like they had been there for a while. So we semi-gloss black powder coated them. What else can I tell you? I mean, other than it being an EV, it's a pretty straightforward deal. Um, oh yeah, seats. We updated the front seats. These kind of kept the original kind of vibe and style, but the original seats were horrendously uncomfortable. These low backs still match the aesthetic, but they now have multiple position recline and just much better padding and sculpting. So I was kind of resistant to my client's decision to want to do that in the beginning, but now I'm glad he pushed for it because it really turned out nice. Also, the rear seat and the new front seats, we went ahead and recovered in leather. Smells lovely, just slightly more bespoke, but again, subtly so. And we took advantage of that original V-dub kind of basket weave pattern, and then we embossed the leather to uh, have that same pattern. So you have smooth top grain with a French double stitch on the seams, and then that uh, kind of basket weave on the insets to set it off and keep it from being kind of boring. So that's probably enough. I mean, this is such a novel project, you know. I'm really excited about it because I think in the near future, you and we at Icon are gonna see a lot more EV projects. I think that it's not only gonna to appeal to people that previous to us offering EVs didn't engage with our brand, and I also think we're gonna see a lot of our existing clients go, huh, that could be cool. So maybe let's do an EV whatever for another property. Obviously, either way, we welcome the business. But I think it's also a good indicator that, you know, we're just, we're always thinking. We're trying to constantly evolve. We're constantly trying to keep our eyes open, see what new technologies come out, new fun ways to make our vehicles that much more interesting. I'm pretty much down with any of it, short of autonomous. Personally, I could give a rat's butt about autonomous cars. I think that's great for whatever soulless car you want to commute in and not really engage with, but I'm all about, we're all about building vehicles that, that, that enhance that man machine, right? That mechanical tactile thing, because that's what we're all about. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch yet another one of my videos. This is one you probably weren't expecting, right? Any questions, call us, old school, 818-280-3333. The website is icon4x4.com. Facebook is simply Jonathan Ward. Instagram is icon4x4. Thank you again. Have a great day.